I think I've chosen a bad topic to do it in 10 minutes, but you know, we'll do what we can with the time we have. So I'm going to talk a little bit about preamble puncturing. It's one of the very less talked about topics with uh, 11AX and now with 11BE, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7. We've always used you know, the 20 megahertz as the basic building block of any channel. And as you know, with 11N, we could actually uh, bind two 20 megahertz channels to make 40 megahertz. And then with 11AC, we could also do like another 40, make it 80. Now, the biggest problem that started happening is that if you have an OBSS or, or you know, DFS or any other kind of interference on any one of these channels, which are the secondary channel, in a particular you know, 80 megahertz or a 40 megahertz block, you then can't really use that channel. And when you don't use that channel, what happens is that you also lose the ability to use the other channels that you're bounded with, and you are left with it with a 20 megahertz channel. And many combinations are possible, but effectively what's happening is that you wanted to use 80, but now you are back to either 20 or 40 or whatever. So preamble puncturing, what it does is that it allows you a way to say, okay, I'm not going to use this one channel that is occupied by somebody else, but then be able to use the rest of the uh, 80 megahertz channel. And you know that way you have better spectral efficiency. You can use more of the bandwidth that was would normally have been idle. And the reason it's called preamble puncturing, and this was like uh, pretty amazing when somebody told me why it's called preamble puncturing is because you send the preamble of the PPDU in every 20 megahertz block. And the fact that you're not sending the preamble itself in one of the blocks that you're trying to puncture, that's why it's called preamble puncturing, because the preamble itself is not sent in that block that way. All the other clients that are associated to you know that they don't have to use this channel. And that's why it's also effective in case of DFS. That's why everybody's going to shut up and you, know, you as a master control that nobody's transmitting in that DFS channel. So this is how basically how the preamble puncturing works. This is what was defined in the 11AX protocol or Wi-Fi 6 protocol. And then obviously there are different modes of uh, the preamble puncturing that can be done is you could puncture any one of the, uh, you know, the three channels which are not primary in an 80 megahertz block, but in a, in a 160 megahertz block, you could either block out the entire 80 if you wanted to this, the secondary 80 with, along with any one of the um, sort of primary modes, uh, primary and secondary 40 megahertz blocks. With Wi-Fi 7, because now we have multi-RU allocations as well, so what happens is that when you're looking at Wi-Fi 6, because you don't have MRUs, uh, so any single client cannot be allocated more than one RU in an OFDMA transmission. What happens is that you can only use preamble puncturing when you have uh, you know, multiple clients or you're using, you, know, you can't use it in a single, um, single user frame. But with multi-RU capability of Wi-Fi 7 where more than one client can be allocated multiple RUs, you can actually use the preamble puncturing in a, um, in a single user frame as well. And then there are so many different combinations that come with, uh, with Wi-Fi 7. It's, really not possible to go into all of these combinations. But, you know, RUs can be allocated in small or large sizes, and there are different sort of sizes of these RUs, and you need to kind of be able to puncture any one of these, uh, you know, uh, 20 megahertz channels based on where you are allocating these RUs. And then with the 360 megahertz channels, which is now allowed in Wi-Fi 7, you get a lot more puncturing combinations, as you may imagine, right? There, if you, if you looked at the, uh, you know, uh, 160 megahertz, then you had only seven different modes that you could do it. But with 360, you can imagine this just blows out into how many uh, you know, blocks you can puncture out. One of the examples that I've taken, so this is just a slide on the smaller M MRUs in terms of what you can do. You, know, you can do 52 plus 26 tone RUs, or you can do 106 plus 26 tone RUs, and this is how it actually fits. And in case of large RUs, I've taken one example where you know, two into one, 996 tone RU plus a 484 tone RU can be you know, uh, accommodated in a, a band by you know, puncturing you know, all the orange bands that you see. So as you can see, there are way, way too many sort of options that are there for doing uh, preamble puncturing in Wi-Fi 7. And all of these are defined in the MRU indices that are transmitted as a part of the EST SIG. 
that is there in the in, in the Wi-Fi 7, uh, uh, defined in Wi-Fi 7. You know, every time I kind of read the spec, I always feel, oh, now I understand how it's done, right? What uh, the MRU index and the MRU type, when I combine these two, what are you going to get? I kind of read the spec and I say, yes, now I know what it is. Then I close the uh, sort of PDF, then I start to think back, and then I don't remember anything. There's just way too many combinations that are out there. But somebody will write firmware or some code, microcode for this, and then I don't have to remember it. So that's the good part of it. And in conclusion, I think I did it you know, really quickly, but you know, <laughs> in, in conclusion, you know, preamble improves the spectral efficiency in the presence of dense environments, DFS activity, and interference. So you know you can make better use of your channel that's available to you. And then uh, with the MRU capability of Wi-Fi 7, it, it, it also allows us uh, you know, preamble puncturing for single user frames that was not possible in Wi-Fi 6. So that's my time. Thank you.